In this lesson, we are going to start getting into more advanced features and have a look at environment settings. Before we open environment settings, it's a good idea to move the camera so you get a good view of both the sky and the ground. This way, you'll be able to see all the changes you make. Now let's hit the right touchpad and bring up the editor menu and scroll to track settings. Or you can also use the radial menu by hitting down on the D-pad and using the right stick to point to track settings. Now let's scroll down to environment settings. There are a lot of submenus in here, so I'm going to try to get through them as quickly as possible. First is time of day. In here you can select one of the many environment presets. These are quick shortcuts that may be the look that you want or give you a nice starting point to adjust more custom settings. Next we have sun settings. First, we have sun texture. Here, you can set the sun to be the sun, the moon, a sunset, or an eclipse. Sun angle is next. This sets the height of the sun. Sun longitude adjusts the right and left position of the sun. Sun size is the size of the sun. Sun intensity is the brightness of the sunlight. Sun flare intensity adjusts the brightness of the sun flare. Sunlight color is the color of the light generated by the sun. Sun visual color is the color of the sun you see in the sky. Sun glare size, color, opacity, and ramp all adjust the sun's glare. Okay, let's hit circle to back out of this menu. Next is sky settings. New to rising are sky maps. These are preset sky overlays that give you way more options for the look of your sky. Type is where you can select the different sky maps available. Sky map opacity is where you adjust the visibility or alpha of the map, or how much you can see through it. Sky map brightness adjusts the brightness of the map. A lower number will be darker. Gamma adjusts the differences between lighter tones and darker tones. Think of it as kind of a contrast. Minimum and maximum input and output all adjust the amount of color used in the map. Rotation adjusts the rotation of the map. Now, for behind the sky map, we have sky horizon, middle, and zenith color. This creates a gradient between the three colors, and the next three options are how you adjust the gradient. Sky brightness does just what it says. A lower number will once again be darker. Star brightness adjusts the brightness of the stars. Keep in mind, the brighter your sky is, the harder it may be to see the stars. Next is cloud settings. First is cloud color. This brings up a color picker to pick the color of your clouds. Cloud direction rotates the clouds. Wind direction adjusts the way the wind is blowing. Wind magnitude adjusts how hard the wind is blowing. High and low cloud size, cloud opacity, and cloud brightness all adjust the look of the clouds. Hopefully by now, these settings are starting to look familiar. Cloud shadow opacity adjusts the darkness of the shadow cast by the clouds on the ground. Keep in mind, this may affect track performance if you use a higher opacity setting. Next is fog settings. First, let's turn off height fog. We will talk about this in a moment. Okay, now let's look at type. There are three types of fog, and depending on which type you choose here, the options in the fog settings menu will change. First is linear. Linear fog will start at zero opacity until it reaches a certain distance, the fog start distance, and then climb to your full opacity setting at the second distance, the fog end distance. Fog opacity is the overall opacity of the fog on the ground. We will set this to 100% so we can see the other settings we are gonna make. Fog sky density is the density or opacity of the fog in the sky. Once again, we will set this to 100%. Fog sky height ramp is the height of the fog in the sky. We will also set this to 100%. Okay, now going back up, humidity level is the percentage of humidity or dew on the terrain and objects. Zero would be no humidity or dry, and 100 would be max humidity or just like it rained. Next, we'll skip to fog start color. This is the color of your fog at the start distance. Fog end color is the color of your fog at the end distance. Fog color attenuation adjusts the blend between the two start and end colors. Fog start distance is the distance from the camera the fog starts. Fog end distance is the distance from the camera the fog ends. Okay, now back up to type, we have exponential and exponential two. These settings start the fog out at the camera and end the fog at your max view distance. In the menu, our start and end distance has changed now to start density and end density. Fog start density is the density of the fog at the camera, and fog end density is the density of the fog at the max view distance. Keep in mind, you can't set the start density higher than the end density. Okay, now let's talk about height fog. Height fog creates more density in low places of the map and less density in the higher places. So as you climb, the fog will fade away smoothly. Height fog start altitude is where you set the height for the fog to start. 
Height fog end altitude is where you set the mic's height for your fog. Height fog density is where you set the opacity of your height fog. Okay, let's hit circle to back out of this menu. Next is reflection settings. Once again, under environment preset, we have the presets that you can select to match the rest of your environment settings. Next is ambient color. An ambient color is the color of objects that are not in the sunlight. In other words, shadow colors. Ambient colors are usually dull and flat, so I recommend using ambient colors along with your sunlight color to create a nice dynamic look for your tracks. Ambient intensity does just that. Adjust the intensity of your ambient color. The next few settings adjust the intensity and the rotation of the reflection map. You will just have to play with these settings to get the look that you want. There are not going to be any common settings, and it will depend on what you want and how your track looks. Next is water settings. This will only adjust the base game water and not any water you place in the world. That will have to be adjusted with its own properties. First, we have color. Once again, this brings up a color picker to select the color for the dirt in the water. Next is substance amount. This adjusts the amount of dirt in the water. Next, we have substance fade. This adjusts the density of the dirt in the water. A lower number means you can see deeper into the water. Lastly, we have reflection. This is where you adjust the amount of light reflection in the water surface. Okay, let's hit circle to back out of this menu. Next, we have particle settings. Just quickly, this is where you can adjust the ambient light and sunlight received by particle effects. A high number will give you more red, green, or blue tint on the particles. Once again, you'll have to play with this to get what you want. There are no common settings. Next, we have visibility settings. In this menu, it's where you can make adjustments to improve your track's performance. First, we have max view distance, which is how far away you see the background scenery. A lower number will give you better track performance because the game doesn't have to draw so many objects in the distance. Adjust this number to its lowest possible setting, but still allowing you to see what you want to see when playing your track. Max object view distance is next, which is where you set how far away you can see objects. This includes base game and other objects that you place. Keep in mind, the advanced settings in an object's properties also lets you customize culling range, which is the distance an individual object can be seen. Next, we have shadow render mode. Set to full, all shadows are drawn. Set to global, only sunlight shadows are drawn. Set to local, only lights that you place will show the shadows. And disabled, no shadows are shown at all. Next is global shadow distribution mode. Set to auto, shadows are drawn from zero to the max shadow view distance. Set to range, shadows are set from the minimum to the maximum view distance. Next is max shadow view distance. This is how far the shadows are cast. Minimum shadow view distance is the point at which shadows start to draw. The next few checkboxes will turn on and off the background, base world objects, base world water, ground foliage, all foliage, and terrain. Terrain decal render mode determines which terrain decals show up on your track. Set to all and everything will show up, including pre-existing decals and user place decals. Dynamic means only user place terrain decals will show up. Static means only pre-existing terrain decals will show up. And disabled means no terrain decals will show up at all. Next is animation range. This is a global setting that determines the distance from the game camera an animated object will animate. This can be overridden in the object properties of the animated object. For instance, NPCs. Global reverb setting is next. This is where you set the global reverb for your track. So, for example, if your track is in a small building, you may want to set it to indoor small. There are many settings here that'll cover most any situation. We'll talk more about reverb in the audio tools lesson later in the series. Okay, lastly, we have dirt settings. Enabled allows dirt to be transferred to the bike and rider during gameplay. Dirt type is the texture of the dirt you want to get on the rider. Initial amount is how much dirt you want the rider to start out with. Accumulation rate is how fast you want the dirt to collect on the rider. Red, green, and blue are the color multipliers, which will affect the colors of the dirt on the bike and rider. And lastly, max height is how high you want the dirt to collect on the bike and rider. Zero would be barely seeing the dirt on the tires, and 200 would be all the way up on the rider's head.